Here are 10 reasons why video production companies tend to fail. Now, a big problem is because a lot of creatives have very unclear pricing structures. Now, if you'll go in to someone, and I've seen this happen so many times before, and that business says, how much is this video gonna cost me? And sometimes creatives can't answer that question or they beat around the bush. They're trying to work out what's the most I can charge for this, et cetera, et cetera. It just builds distrust and it makes that person on the other end feel like, hey, am I getting scammed here? How do you not know how much this thing's cost? You know, you surely must know how much roughly it's gonna cost me. Now, there's a few things out here that I just wanna very quickly break down within that. A lot of business owners think very methodically in a sense of when I go to the supermarket, I buy this for this price. So everything has a price. So this is where value-based pricing it's really important for businesses as you grow. However, when you're just starting out, I see so many people through my academy struggle with not knowing how much to charge because they're trying to implement a value-based structure, but they don't have a grip on the overall business knowledge. So they execute it really badly. And sometimes people just want to know a price. So I always say, if you're starting out, try and pick a day rate. Pick a day rate for filming, a day rate for editing, and then work on the value-based stuff or bringing up those numbers later on. Ultimately, this is all about trust. And I certainly have lost a lot of sales in the past when I was starting out because my prices would be all over the place. If you're quoting wildly high, they're gonna ask you, why have you got to that number? Now you've got to try and justify it. Or if you're making it up as you go along, it's just, it's very messy and it doesn't build confidence. You need to say, yep, a video is gonna roughly cost you this much. There's obviously a few other parameters which we can talk about. Does that fit in with your budget? And then you can have that conversation. People sometimes, from a sales point of view, just want to know how much does it cost? They don't wanna know what the overall value of the problem that you're trying to solve, and I'll take a percent of that, doesn't work very well unless you're an established business. So number one, have a clear pricing structure and I promise you, you're gonna win a lot more work. Ignoring customer feedback might seem like an obvious thing and surely everyone would listen to their client's feedback. Now there's a point, you have to be able to uh, understand the client's position and educate them on what works and what doesn't from a creative standpoint. But sometimes ignoring the client's feedback and just constantly being a case of what I have done is right and it's just, oh, this is a nightmare client, this is a nightmare client, this is a nightmare client. Maybe there's a common denominator and ignoring that feedback won't make you a better creative. You need to separate you from your work take constructive criticism, take it well and move forward within your business. That's the only way you're gonna grow and get better. So take as much customer feedback as you can get. Yes, you don't have to do something about everything, but if you listen to them, it will certainly make you a better creative and be able to connect with more customers who are like-minded. And to flip this around, when a customer comes to us and they say, oh, we've worked with this company before and um, you know, we're really unhappy, I instantly am concerned that actually the company did nothing wrong. It was in fact the client. And I start to try and work that out by asking a series of questions to understand how well that previous company took on their feedback and what kind of feedback was it that they had to make sure I'm not setting myself up for a problematic client. And in fact, it was actually a problem with the production company. So a little bit of feedback from me is to maybe ask your customers for a survey. And instead of just, uh, you know, taking some feedback, maybe document it and you can see if the same things start to come up. It's just a really nice thing to make sure you're on top of it. Because throughout this video, I'm gonna try and give you a few problems and reasons that production companies fail, but I'm also gonna try and provide you with a few solutions and things that you can try and do to overcome those situations. It's very unlikely that you will have poor customer service. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a few people that I know that I'm quite surprised they get any kind of work at all and perhaps they don't mean it in this way, but their customer service is very poor. So maybe just have a little think about that. But the most common reason that's gonna to lead to a production company failing is not having enough customer service. Are you actually doing everything you can? For your current clients, do you send them 
birthday cards? Do you know when they're going on holiday? Do you send them Christmas cards and ve various festive seasonal things? Do you constantly check back with them to make sure that they're happy? Do you keep them in the loop? Are you doing all of these touch points to make sure you deliver outstanding customer service that keeps them coming back to you? Because if you have a good customer service base, you can talk more openly about budgets, you can pitch higher budget ideas because they trust you and you have a good relationship. So think about going away and doing that, make a note of all of their birthdays, uh, various important dates in their calendars, and how you can just go that one step above your competitors to make sure you are delivering ultimate customer service. Number seven is about ignorance of the competition. Now, I certainly have done this a lot, and I'll, I'll talk about something later on in this video about it as well. If your competition are doing something that seemingly clients like or people are shouting about or they're certainly shouting about, try not to ignore it because it's very easy to be like, well, that's just them, they're doing that wrong, that's a competition. And actually, if you take a collaborative mindset approach to this, even if you're looking at a competitor in your same local area that does the same thing you do, if you start to think about, okay, what if they're doing this? What kind of results are they having from that? How could I adapt that to provide more value to my clients? Now, when I started out, I, I definitely had this, and it was kind of like, you know, the way I'm doing things is right, and I'm gonna kind of ignore what they're doing because that's just not me, etc. And actually having that ignorance when they started to become successful and I wasn't, was the reason that actually for some people, they won't be able to get their businesses to grow to the next level and therefore they might just give up. So analyze what the competition are doing and just try to educate on yourself maybe why they're doing that and is there any adaptations that you can provide your clients with uh, to provide a much better service and keep them coming back to you. From my experience of having worked with hundreds of filmmakers, Having a lack of clear focus or a lack of understanding for a target market can be a huge downfall. This doesn't mean that you need to pick your niche from day one and you need to run with it. But what it does mean is having some kind of understanding of where you're going to next. You will reach a time throughout your business where because you don't have a clear plan of action and a clear focus, that that's gonna really hold you back. And if you don't have that target market, it becomes a lot harder to solve really niche and particular problems that are gonna help you basically make more money because the, the, the more niche the problem you can solve, the more you can charge for it as well. Now, if you're providing a general solution to general businesses, then you're only gonna ever be known as a general business yourself. So it's about diving deeper into that and understanding a clear focus. One of the ways that you can do that is just write down a, bit, a bunch of questions. What are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? What do you want in the next 10 years of your business? And start to think about, does that shift towards a particular direction? And then you can backtrack it from there. Now we're halfway through this video. If you want to avoid a thousand years of bad luck, then make sure you subscribe to this channel. Most people aren't and we provide so much valuable information. It really helps us grow to the next level. So just press the button. It's free to do so. You can unsubscribe later if you really don't agree with what we're doing. I have been so guilty of doing this in the past. And tip number five is, the reason that some production companies fail is their inability to keep up with the technology and trends. And I'm not talking about just being financially stable and being able to invest in the latest camera equipment. When drones first came out, I was the most anti-drone person you could find because it was like, oh, why would you want to just have this one aerial shot? All drone shots look the same. There's no creative things you can really do with it. It's just a drone shot. And although there's a small part of me that thinks, yeah, some of that is still true, what people have been able to do with FPV and how drones have developed in themselves, it's a key part of our service offering now and, and what we do to develop amazing videos for brands. It went through a long time of me losing out on a lot of money and a lot of work by not keeping up with the technology and trends and just thinking it's just another trend. TikTok is exactly the same thing put off TikTok for quite a while on how it can help businesses. Now we're really focused into that because as we've noticed, a huge influx of businesses running towards TikTok trends, TikTok advertising content. And yes, a large portion of that is user generated, but there's still a need for high quality video production within those social media platforms. So my advice to you is to 
Don't be closed-minded, and this will lead me nicely onto my tip number four, but to actually think about the trends and, and whether or not it's something that you can provide value to your clients. Your business doesn't operate without your clients, so how can you help them grow and how can you then start to have more fun? And if you're open-minded, that's gonna be a lot easier to do than being closed-minded and ultimately, yeah, missing out on a lot of, um, a lot of money and a lot of revenue. I did the, exactly the same thing with 360 video as well. And and uh, yeah, missed out on some opportunities there. I wanted to include tip number four, and this is having a stiff mindset. And I'm gonna explain about this a bit more. Production companies, as you grow and you spend a lot of years creating content, you really get fixed in your ways. Now, I'm gonna explain this to you in a really simple term. If you have a tree that's growing and it's young and it's flexible, it has a flexible growth state, okay? It's in a growth mode. So it's flexible and able to take on that information. It's able to take on the growth. When a storm comes along, nothing can blow it over because it can literally flex, it's flexible, right? So it leans back and forth, nothing can knock it over. As it becomes older, it becomes more stiff and more set in its ways. And when a storm does come, it's very easy to blow over an old tree than it is to a flexible tree. Now, if you take that into your own mindset, if you have a stiff mindset, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to fail because you know, you're not going to adapt with the times. There's gonna be a lot more problems with that stiff mindset. Whereas if you take on a flexible mindset, you're gonna be able to adapt a lot easier to an ever-changing environment. And it kind of links to my point before about technology and trends and adapting, but also, Business is a huge, huge part. Business is a huge part about mindset. And no matter how much of mindset you believe, a lot of the most successful people have a very good mindset. They practice meditation. They practice working on their own ability to shift their mindset, whether that's something like the law of attraction where you obsess over something that naturally you start to find um, opportunities within that thing you wanted to do. That's certainly something that has happened time and time again in my business, where we've actually drawn out what we want our studio to look like. And when that opportunity came up to purchase a studio, it was very strange that it looked almost identical to my drawings previously. Perhaps because I become so obsessive over this one thing, I was on the lookout for a, uh, a location that would fit that that box or tick that box. But this also happens with our clients too. So for you, something I would advise is just keep working on yourself. Keep working on that mindset. Read some mindset books and look inwardly before you look outwardly and you're trying to blame other people or other factors. Think about what you can do different. And uh, I think there's a really powerful point there. So yeah, hopefully you get some good value from that. Okay, onto the last three. Tip number three is businesses can fail because of lack of business acumen. We as creatives are really good at the creative stuff and most of us are not so good at the business stuff. That's why I created this channel. And clearly there's 18,000 of you at this point of, of creating this video that agree that you could probably do with a bit more on the business side of things. Now, that just becomes with this growth. It's easy to focus on the things that are fun and very easy to put off the things that are often the most important. So what I would suggest, and instead you could potentially do, is start to write out a to-do list, but split them up into four sections. The first is what is important to your business growth and what is urgent. The next is what is urgent, but not important to your business growth. That might be a time scale on a particular uh, edit or project or something like that. Under here, you can put something that is not important, sorry, that is not urgent, but is important. So it's important to your business growth, but it can wait for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. In this column, anything that goes in not important and not urgent, basically you can dismiss or delegate, or it just doesn't need to worry about your day-to-day -day tasks. So take your to-do list, move them into those sections. That's something I find really helpful to work on. What do I need to do? I need to invest in my knowledge. I need to, uh, 
grow my business and I need to do these things. And investing in your knowledge is something that I've recently done yet again. I've invested in my own mentor that has worked with a lot of agencies to help us just systemize things a little bit better so everything flows a lot easier. So that's certainly something that if you haven't had a coach before or you haven't purchased a mentoring program or anything like that, it's really hard to make those first steps. But when you do, you never look back and it really changes your mindset towards investing in your knowledge because that knowledge is something that's going to stick with you for the rest of your life, no matter what you do. Our production company almost failed and it's kind of because of tip number two. Businesses that fail to plan for the future are much more likely to fail. We were so busy that we didn't really plan to be that busy. So we just got roped into working with our heads in the sand. And when we realized that we had no one making any sales for us, when we lost some clients, there was no work. And we had a huge loss to our business that we are, are still trying to get back on track on. And we're making good effort, but it's been a lot of effort to get there. So instead of just working on your business day to day, take some time outside of that to plan for the future. What happens when you get busy? Have you got backup plans for being inundated with work? Do you have subcontractors you can use? And things like that. Failure to plan for future expansion can be the exact reason businesses fail because you're gonna provide a lesser service to your existing clients and therefore they're not gonna come back to you and you're gonna face loads of problems or you become so busy that actually it ends up imploding. Um, and that's something that I thought was growing up and learning business that surely being really busy is like a really good problem. It can be, but it can be an absolute detriment to your business because you provide a lesser service, a lesser quality to everyone. And all of a sudden, then those people don't come back to you and you're left with no business at all. Now, poor marketing and branding is probably one of the top reasons why businesses struggle to get going in the first place. And because if they struggle to get going and you can't make that business growth, you end up saying to yourself, is this worth it? And you end up giving up. When you give up, there's one certified answer to that. You failed. It has failed. It isn't working any longer. So if you don't have a positive brand, if you go to your website and it doesn't really speak what you're about or more importantly, doesn't speak to your target audience, and if you followed some of these points I've mentioned, then you'll know exactly who that is, then you're not gonna be able to make any sales. You're not gonna have a portfolio to back that up. And if you're not doing any marketing, and sales and marketing are, are linked in a lot of ways, then you're not gonna be getting your business in front of the right people. Marketing can also come under going to networking events. It can be um, doing an expo, it can be um, actually, actually exhibiting your services at an event, it can be Facebook ads, it can be organic posting, it can be all of these things. And if you don't have those things fill in your funnel with work, and you certainly don't have the branding to make your business look like it is the right fit for your target audience, then it's going to fail. This is something we're learning more and more about the importance of as we're trying to reach those upper levels. And it's taken a lot of time to get there because they're just things that we haven't done right from the start. So understand your target audience, follow these tips and create a really nice brand that excites and attracts new clients. Learning from people's mistakes will get you much further in business than just hearing about them talk about success all the time. So here are 27 things I wish I knew before starting a production company.